Hey, Review and Preview fans, back at it with a short video here tonight. And in this video, I want to talk about the Yukon Huskies winning their sixth national championship and back-to-back -back national titles. The first team to do that since the 06-07 Florida Gators. First and foremost, folks, if you're new to the channel, make sure to check us out on all of our social media at Review and Preview Sports on Facebook, Review and Preview on Instagram. There's the one on Twitter. We're on the Anchor and our YouTube channel as well at Review and Preview Sports. Appreciate all your support. Let's talk about them Huskies and what this means for the future of college basketball. So I think throughout this March Madness season, we've seen that college basketball is starting to come back a little bit. Now, I know there's issues with NIL and everything and guys transferring. The transfer portal has been blowing up, but a lot of the teams that made it far in the tournament this year and in most years in the past, but more now than ever, upperclassmen, right? Upperclassmen-oriented teams, experienced coaches, guys who've been in the game for a while, right? You look at this UConn team, they lost five of their eight main players from last season, but what did they do? They got out and they got a, tra a transfer in Cam Spencer. You know, they got a really impressive freshman in Stefan Castle to fill voids. So I think it's really exciting to see UConn do this. Uh, Purdue was never really a match for them. Now, they held the lead early on in the first half for a little bit. But UConn is the bona fide number one team in college basketball. They are a blue, a blue blood, um, finishing the season 37-3. and three. This is the first time, folks, that a number one overall seed has won, has won the tournament since the Louisville Cardinals did it back in 2013 under Rick Pitino. Um, Tristan Newton wins the most outstanding player, 20 points, five boards, seven assists. Now the game plan for UConn was simple. Take away the shooters and contain Zach Eady with Donovan Klingon. Um, and I thought Klingon did a good job neutralizing Zach Eady. Now Eady still got his, his bread. He got his spare change. You know, Eady was Purdue's leading scorer, um, but nobody else was able to contribute, right? When they brought Samson Johnson in the game. UConn's game plan was to send Cam Spencer to help on the double when Klingon was on the sideline, and it worked, right? And UConn's size and their quickness amongst their guards allowed them to do that and execute that game plan efficiently. That's how you beat Purdue. You take away the outside shooting, right? Fletcher Lawyer had zero points, 0 for 5 from the field. The next leading scorer after Zach Eady was Braden Smith, 12 points and 8 assists. No one else had more than 5 points this UConn team was phenomenal they take care of the basketball well just eight turnovers the entire game 48 percent from the field 82 percent from the foul line recipes for success out rebounding Purdue really good rebounding team every starter had at least five rebounds for the UConn Huskies now I talked about Tristan Newton but I mean Donovan Klingon 11 points five boards he did have four fouls so Zach Eady was definitely a challenge and Dan Hurley was willing to you know, expend his front court a little bit in this game for the sake of winning a national title. And sometimes you have to devise a game plan that maximizes your potential of winning the game. And it's bodies, right? UConn doesn't go very deep in their rotation. They play seven, eight guys. Um, so the fact that Donovan Klingon was able to defend well, hold his ground, and stay out of foul trouble until the second half came along is fairly impressive. Um Stefan Castle as well, 15 points, very exciting young player, likely a lottery pick in this year's draft unless he decides to return to UConn, which is unlikely. Cam Spencer was the team's leading rebounder, had eight rebounds, 11 points. This guy really wanted to win. His plus minus is amazing. His basketball IQ is through the roof. Um, the transfer from Rutgers, previously from Loyola, Maryland. He played three years there, really only played two, though. And then one year at Rutgers, one year at UConn. So he has a year of eligibility remaining. It'll be interesting to see if Cam Spencer will come back despite being a redshirt senior. Alex Caravan does a little bit of everything. He struggled from the field to start the game, but he's an excellent shooter. Um, he's a Swiss Army knife. He's one of the most important players on this UConn team. And he's one of the most smartest players in the entire game of college basketball today. Um, and the reason why is he's unselfish. He makes winning plays. Five points, six boards, four assists, and two blocks. His defense was very underrated. When J. 
Johnson fouled out and Klingon picked up his fourth foul. Guess who played center and guarded Zach Eady? The 6'8 sophomore, Alex Carabat. So that goes without saying. Uh, Hassan Diara, another senior, nine points in just 13 minutes off the bench. So he did a good job when he was in there. UConn made this tournament look easy again. They covered the spread in every game each of the last two tournaments. Dan Hurley, you know, continues to solidify his name as one of the greatest coaches of all time through this dynasty. Um, yeah, and what's next for UConn, right? Well, we know as far as the returnees for the top six scorers, everyone else is a senior or likely headed to the NBA draft except for Alex Caravan. I expect him to stay. Uh, Cam Spencer has another year of eligibility. Um, I don't think he'll use it at this time. Now, they do have two four-stars coming in, Ahmad Noel and Isaiah Abraham for the class of 2024. We'll see if they stay committed to the Huskies. It looks like they are. But two four-stars, that's pretty good. Um, you know, they'll, they'll get Johnson a little bit more involved next year. Maybe he'll take that clinging role. But, yeah, I mean – that's a huge shoe to fill, right? Placing Dama Sonogo and then Donovan Klingon. It's definitely rough. Now, the real question is, before we could talk about the team next season, will Dan Hurley stay at UConn? You know, there's rumors with John Calipari taking the head coaching job for Arkansas officially that Hurley is the top candidate to become Kentucky's next head coach. Kentucky reportedly has offered him anywhere between 7 to $11 million. I don't know if Hurley's going to chase the money or stay at UConn. He's built a foundation with the Huskies. I think it would be silly for him to go. There's also a rumor lurking that Calipari has told Hurley not to take the Kentucky job. Um, I think Hurley should stay at UConn. Will he is the question. Money talks. Um, also, shout out to the Purdue Boilermakers for making it this far and really defying the odds. But that's all I've got, folks. UConn's officially a blue blood if they weren't already in your mind. They are now, and there's no arguing that. Six national championships, can't do anything there. Folks, appreciate all the support. Smash the like button. Subscribe for more sports content notifications. Appreciate you all, and I'll catch you all in the next video.